Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. I'm Jack, this is Freddie, and Freddie has helped us with the project we're working on today. Freddie painted both of these carvings right here. Uh, say hi to everybody, Freddie. Hi. And he did a great job. Yes, he did. And I want to thank uh, the National Wood Carvers Association, uh, the publication Chip Chats. They uh, sent a request and asked me to submit one of my patterns for this little elf uh, gnome with the heart and uh, it got published in the current edition thanks and if you're not a member go to chipchats.org and sign up you'll get all kinds of great uh, deals and magazines too so today we're going to carve a little ornament that looks like a holly leaf it's kind of a fun project it's pretty simple it's inspired by larry green larry put together a design for a little christmas tree with a face on it and so that's what inspired this particular carving I call it Holly Days, and it's spelled H-O-L-L-I, named after Holly Smithson. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun today, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Yep. So here are some examples of this little holly leaf ornament that we're going to be working on today. Two of these examples are actually carved out of high-density urethane foam, and the other two are carved out of basswood. It can be difficult to tell uh, the difference, but I'll, I'll show you that this one here is foam. And this one is also high-density urethane foam. Um, well, I did a video about carving high-density urethane foam. Call it HDU. And uh, you can check that out. You might have an interest in giving it a try, especially if you're a new carver. What I did with this design is I made a modification. Early on, you can see that I had the bottom pointy, right, just like the other parts of the leaf. And it was not really functional except as an ornament and I thought to myself well what can we do to alter that design and make it a freestanding carving as well as an ornament so today we're going to work on this modified design what I did is I made a triangular foot on the bottom so now it can be a freestanding carving as well as an ornament that you would hang on your tree and of course you could always lay it flat to display it if you were at a craft fair as well Lots of different options there. So today we're going to start with a piece of basswood. And this particular piece of basswood is two inches wide, that's 51 millimeters, by three and a half inches tall, that's 89 millimeters. And the wood grain is running with the length of our block of wood here. This particular piece is about an inch thick and I've beveled the back side of it already except for the bottom. I kept material on the bottom because we want to make that foot. So I beveled two edges and the top. Now you could also use three quarter inch, maybe even half inch stock uh, for this carving. It's a relief carving. It doesn't require, um, you know, a one inch thick block of wood. You could, if you wanted to, carve faces on both sides. That's always an option. It's also, you know, easy to put a message on the back. If you're going to give this to someone as a holiday gift, you could always put a nice season's greetings on the back side. So you can see I've made some pattern drawings here on one side of the carving, and I'll show you how to set that up on the other side. First thing you want to do is make yourself a center line on the piece of wood. And then once you've got your center line, we're just going to make a few marks. Let's start from the bottom. What we're going to do on the bottom here is come in one half inch from each of the outer edges and then we're going to make a line. That's 13 millimeters. Okay, From the outside make a line from this edge and make a line. Then we're going to come from our center line and just draw an angled line to the back of this side and then we'll do the same thing here. This is going to be that triangular foot that we're shooting for, okay? So now we've got our triangle right there. Next thing we'll do is make some marks up this side of our piece of wood here. So from the bottom, we're going to mark up one inch and we'll go up another inch and make a line and then from that point we're going to go up 
a quarter inch. All right. So that's 25 mils for the first line. Another 25 mils. Well, looks like I've got my lines messed up here. That'd be the other 25 mils right there. And then six millimeters, quarter inch, for that final line on there. And what that gives us is a point and a point and then a reference point here. Well, I'm sorry, not that one. That's the one I was trying to erase earlier, reference point here. And then we also have our point here at the bottom. Now remember we came in about a half inch and we made this line. So we know where that half inch mark is here. What we're going to do next is measure up half an inch from that spot. Just make ourselves a little dot at that point. All right, so that's 13 mils at half inch. And that gives us this point. We're just drawing in a curved line like that. And then this point out here is the same as this point here. We're just going to draw in another curved line. This is going to give us our pattern. And then we have another one up here that corresponds to this side. like that. And then we have this little short space here that we're going to tuck in behind a top leaf that we're going to put in. And these top leaves kind of resemble hair. So before we get to putting in this leaf, we want to put in the holly berries. These holly berries, I usually use three, with one on the bottom, two on the top. I'm going to encourage you to make these about the size of a pencil eraser. And you'll probably think, well, that's way too big. Believe me, as you carve on these things, they get small. So start big and make them touch, okay? Make them touch one another. That's going to make it easier for you in the long run. And uh, you will eliminate some fuzzies by making them touch because you won't have to try and create this little narrow gap in here. It's going to be real simple. Okay, so we have the berries in place. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to co come over here to the, the mark we made right here. It's the, the highest mark that we made on this side. We'll go up about three quarters of an inch. And then we'll make a mark here. All right, just like that. Next, we're gonna come up to the top of our block of wood. We're gonna come off this edge a quarter inch, about six millimeters, and make ourselves a mark here. All right, so what that gives us is a reference for this point and a reference for this point. We already have a reference for the bottom of this leaf, and the top of the leaf will come out from this berry right here. About halfway along this side of the berry, we just start there. We're going to draw a nice sloping line down to our reference point here. That's going to be the center line, that vein that runs through the center of the leaf right there. And we know we have a point here, and point up here. Okay, so we're going to come from this point, make a curved line down to the bottom, and we'll do another curved line up to this point, and then from this point we'll just bring our curved line back over to where we started. Now, 
all we have to do is put in two more points. The easy thing to do is look at where this one is, just come across from it, make a dot, look at where that one is, come across from it, make a dot. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Holly leaves in nature are not perfectly symmetrical. So this is another curved line. Again, here, just like that. And then, there we go. So very quickly and easily, you've got yourself a pattern going here. Now, with this one, we would put in some lines like this sort of mirror what we have on the other side. So we've got ourselves a basic shape. Next thing we'll do is put on the carving gloves, grab the knife, and start roughing it out. Now we'll start roughing out our shape here for the holly leaf. We're going to be using a healthy rough, uh, rough out uh, blade. It's a sweep blade. You can see it's a little bit of a sweep right there. It's a one and three quarter inch and it's really good for roughing out. And since we're naming this particular carving after Holly Smithson, it's very appropriate to go ahead and use a Helvey knife. Now remember you have your triangle on the bottom. You don't want to remove too much wood where you're getting into that particular foot. Unless, of course, you want to go with a pointed bottom and just make an ornament for hanging on your tree, then you don't need to have the foot there. Okay, we're going to move up this side a little bit here. Sometimes what I like to do is go to my point where I have that reference and just make a little bit of a stop cut there. Go up to the next one and make a stop cut there as well. And one last one, just like that. Just uh, like I said, a reference for us as we're carving. Now these curved lines here are not extremely arced, just a little gentle curve. Okay, one of the good things about this sweep blade, it's really good at slicing and uh, excellent for this kind of work. You could do it with a straight blade, not a problem. I've done it, you can do it. All right, now this last one, just a little bit of a cut. I'm just gonna tuck it under like that. And when I come up here, I'm going to make another stop cut at the point that I've got right there. And just be real gentle here. Take a little bit of a slice. And then up here on the corner, of course, we can just take that off. Let's go over to the other side. Continue with what we're doing. Today I'm using a piece of Heineke basswood. Tim Heineke and the family um, were putting out such a great product. Customer service is also great. I encourage you, if you've never tried the Heineke basswood, to give it a shot. I think you'll be very happy with it. All right, we'll keep roughing out this bottom piece. Again, I want to keep my triangle on the bottom here so that I have a foot to make it a freestanding carving. 
But just a reminder for everyone that's subscribed to the channel, I give away a free carving every 90 days to one of my subscribers. I just sent one of these carvings to Carl in Idaho. And thank you very much, Carl, for subscribing to the channel. Okay, we're just going to come in here and curve that cut a little bit. Just turn in that blade as we work it down the side. Just like that. Let's go ahead and make a stop cut like we did on the other side. Stop cut here. And one here. I'm just putting a little pressure on there, rocking the blade back and forth. One right there as well. Yeah. I'm just going to come over here on that corner and make a slice. There we go. Come on the back side, do the same thing. And then I'm going to go up the middle. So I mentioned in the intro that this design was inspired by Larry Green. He did a Christmas tree ornament that, well, I guess is not even so much an ornament. It's a freestanding carving with a face on it, a little Christmas tree. And um, I thought, well, that's a great idea. Maybe I could do something similar. And so I thought, yeah, how about a holly leaf? They're very popular around the holidays. And so I worked out a drawing, a little concept, and started practicing on the foam. Got to what I liked, and then uh, put it into wood. OK, we'll go up here and make ourselves a stop cut as well. All right there. We've got a, a look at our reference line. I'm going to carve this one upside down. Again, coming over onto that edge. Take that out. Over on the back side. And I'll just come up the middle to that stop cut. Okay. Just going to chunk off the corner. It's just a little paring cut right there. If you've never tried a paring cut, it's just your hand, okay? You're not using your whole arm. You're not even bending your wrist. You're just squeezing that hand. Put your thumb out of the way, and then bring your hand closed, just like that. Now, in this case, I'm turning the blade to get that curve while I'm drawing it towards me, okay? Just to get that little curvature. There we go. So what we'll do next is put in these little cherry berries. These uh, holly berries are important to get in. Um, we want to show some depth, of course, to bring the berries out. And we're going to go ahead and put in some stop cuts that will give us some good uh, reference lines there. I'm going to switch out knives now to a different Helvy knife. I'll be right back. All right, we'll crank it up again. This is a Helvy one inch detailer knife with a Steve Brown handle. This is a very pointy Helvy. You can tell it's definitely a detail knife. I'm just going to go ahead and make some stop cuts by following the lines that we drew in here earlier. Just going to put the blade in and come along the outside of that line. And when I get to the edge here, I'm just going to rock my blade like this. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of outlining the edge of the leaf. Until it gets to that berry. And then we will start outlining the berries. This one almost looks like a hidden Mickey, the uh, three little circles here, which if you go to Disney very often, hidden Mickeys are a big deal there. There's a lot of them. All right, so this berry 
is going to be on top of that leaf, right? So we want the berry up at the front. So we'll carve that in before we carve the leaf. And then we'll just come over here and make one more stop cut on the outside of that berry. So I'm just going to come along the edge here where we have that stop cut and just peel off some of that wood. Do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, that one's going to be a little stubborn, I guess. And we start in here. I can see there's a little bit of a triangle opportunity for us. I'm just going to take the tip of my knife blade, stab it in there from this direction, stab it in from this direction, and then slice up into that corner to get some depth. I want to do the same thing over here, create some depth Come in this side, and then come in from this side. And then again, take the tip of that blade, slice up into there. And I'm just going to come along the outside edge of that berry. Again, we're creating some depth giving ourselves some material to work with. In order to bring the berries out, we have to remove what's around it. Okay, so now that we've gotten some of the detailed lines in place, I'm just going to go back to my rough out knife here. and Start taking out a little bit more material. Again, this is going to give us depth that we will need. in order to see those berries and make them pop. This also will give us some depth to bring out these two leaves here at the top because they are also going to be on a sort of a different plane, let's say, than the rest of the face. going to come up here to the top of this carving next to the berry make a stop cut sort of curve this line now up here you're working with end grain and that's going to be a little more difficult for you to carve through don't get discouraged though if you have a sharp knife you're going to be okay but end grain is more challenging let's say to slice through then when you're working with the grain along the lengthwise part of your carving. Do the same thing on this side. Come to the top of that berry. Make ourselves a stop cut there. Okay, so it's getting some of that curvature that I'm looking for. I like it. Now we'll just go in here, make ourselves some stop cuts right in between those berries.
And I would say that working on these little berries here is probably more difficult than the face. Uh, believe it or not, the face is easier than this. All right. So again, I'm looking for more depth here between those berries and the surface of this piece. I'm just going to work in here with my knife. And of course, my detail knife. along this side of this berry to get some relief between the berry and the leaf on this side. Remember that leaf will be disappearing behind that berry. Same thing over here. It's going to get some separation. And we'll start working on rounding these berries. Coming along the edge, sort of a beveled cut to round the tops. And like I say, when you get into that end grain, just take it slow. Don't get discouraged. Remember, we drew these larger than we want them for a reason. Because they do get small as you go. You definitely want to remove all the bandsaw marks off the top. It's part of the rounding process. And if they're different sizes, that's okay. It's not a problem. beveled edge around the outside here. And I'm going to bring that one down a little bit. between these two at the top to help us achieve some roundness there. Again, we want them to touch in the center. It's certainly okay to have some space between them here at the top. Now again, this is end grain here. So be patient with yourself. Continuing to round some of these. All right. Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to finish cleaning up those berries later. Next thing I want to do is take these two leaves and tuck them underneath of the berry to the outside. First thing we'll do is just come up here 
maybe six mils from the part where it intersects with the berry and just put an angled cut just like that. Do the same thing on this side. Just angle it and give that illusion that it's tucking in behind that berry. Now from time to time you'll have to redraw your lines on these pieces. That's not a problem either. While we're here on these two leaves we're going to angle those backwards. So we're going to give them some depth. I'm thinking this middle line here has an imaginary sort of a line. I'm going to take my rough out blade angled like this push it right through the top side of that leaf from the center out just like that. And what that's going to do like I said it gives it a little more depth like this. Same thing on the other side. Just come across angling that well pay attention to your grain if it doesn't want to go go the opposite way. Just angling it just like that. And then you can come back in here and clean up some of your curves that you had in place. Not a problem. And yeah, if you wanted to redraw your line, right, you could certainly do that pretty easy. Come back in, put in that center line on each side. I'm going to clean up this edge real quickly. Next, we'll put in the face. It's a fairly simple face. Like I said, I think it's easier than putting in those berries. So we'll start by identifying the bottom of the nose. So we'll come down from the top of our piece three quarters of an inch along our center line. And you know, we have that center line going through here. So we'll come down from the top an inch and three quarters. Now in millimeters, that's going to be 44 mils from the top. All right, so go to that top edge, come on down an inch and three quarters or 44 mils. Just make a line that intersects where that center line is. That'll be our, the bottom of our nose right down there. Next, we'll measure 7 eighths of an inch. That's 22 millimeters from the bottom of the nose. And we'll make a mark probably about a quarter inch, six mils wide. That'll be the bridge of the nose. So we'll go up seven eighths from the mark that we just made. Okay, it's going to be about here. And I think I mentioned seven eighths, that's 22 mils. So now we have the top and bottom of the nose. All we're going to do is put in this sort of a curved line, just a gentle curve on each side of the center line to create that nose. Simple as that. Now we need some eyes. So we're gonna, we're gonna come down from the top again. This time it's gonna be an inch and a half. That's 38 mils from the top of our block right here, inch and a half. Just going to make a curved line, okay folks? Just like this. It's going to be the bottom sort of eyelid piece. We'll make another line over on this side, right? Here we go. Next we need to mark out the top of that particular eye. So from the lower level of the eye, the, the mark we just made, we'll go up 7 sixteenths. That's 11 millimeters. So we'll just come to the, the lower edge of that mark here. Make it 7 sixteenths. And there's our line. 
Uh, the easy way to look at that is just one tick mark south of half an inch. <laughs> or you could go millimeters. It's 11 mils. And we're going to make a curved line here, just like we did at the bottom. And then all we do is connect the outside. Do the same thing over here. Curved line. And then connect it. Now we've got our nose, we've got our eyes. Let's put the mouth in too. All we're going to do is come down about a quarter inch from where the bottom of the nose is. So that's six mils. And we're going to make a mark on the center line at that point. Just like that. Next, what we'll do is we'll work from the bottom of the nose each way uh, on each side of the bottom of the nose. We're going to go out half an inch. That's 13 millimeters from the center line and make, it, make ourselves a mark. So we'll come to the bottom of the nose and we'll just make a mark half inch each side. Again, 13 mils. Just like that. All we're going to do with those is just make a little slanted curved line just like this. Those will be the corner of the mouth. And then we're just going to connect the dots here to make that smile. All right. So we've got the mouth, the eyes, and the nose. Sometimes you want to add just a few little details to make it a little extra special. Around the outside of the nose, I might put in a little wrinkle mark here or there. And then around the corners, the edges of the mouth, put some nice smile lines, big curved area just like this. Right? And then uh, I'll probably put in some eyebrows too. Just gentle little slope. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let's put the carving gloves back on, grab a knife, and we'll start carving this face. When I carve these faces, I like to start with the nose. And to do that, I simply do some stop cuts and then relieve that little line. So we're just going to come in here and bring my blade up along that edge. Turn it around and come at it from the other direction. Just take a little bit of a sliver that's going to be this edge of the nose. And that one didn't want to pop out, so we'll just go back over it. If it doesn't pop out the first time, just go back over it. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side of the nose. Again, just following the line. and establishing where we're going to have the edge of our nose. So it doesn't take a whole lot of depth to get there, folks. Next thing I like to do is start putting in the eyes. And that starts by a stop cut across the bottom and the top. and then up the outside edge, just like that. Next, I'll just take out two little triangles, one here where the eye comes up against the nose. I'm just going to put the blade in there. Not a lot. It's just a small triangle here, folks. And then cut that out at the corner, and we'll put one in over here. Is it from one side and the other? Pop that out. And next thing I'll do is just come up this edge. And then along the top. I'll also come along the, uh, the edge where the nose meets the eye, 
just to round that off a little bit. Okay, so what we want to do is sort of give this eye a little bit of roundness and remove the bandsaw marks. So I'm just going to start over here, angling my blade out towards that edge a little bit. And I'm going to come this way and sort of angle my blade the opposite way, just like that. And then just clean up the center just a little bit here. Now what I like to do as well is sort of bevel these edges. On this line, for example, I'll come up here and just take, take the edge off of it, okay? Just sort of smoothing out the edges around the eye, soften them up some. Same thing on the bottom. There we go. And that's how we do the eye. Go ahead and do this other one. So it's the same thing, uh, stop cut curving over like that. Stop cut at the top to curve around like this. And then another stop cut to make that connection between the top and the bottom. Taking out triangles here at the bottom. A little bit here, a little bit there, and a good slice into the corner. Same thing on this side, right? Stab this way, and another stab this way, again, slice into the corner, and then I'm just going to angle that up, and come along this side here, And just rounding that eye a little bit. These are fairly easy to do. I gave an example of this, uh, this style of eye when I did my cartoon eye carving video. And I had used this style when I created what I call Banana Man. If you've seen him, this is pretty much the same sort of a face as Banana Man. Again, I'm just sort of softening up these edges. And let's, while we're here, get rid of these pencil marks. Clean that up a bit. So why don't we go ahead and put in that mouth. What I like to do is start with these corners. Come up here, make a little triangle by taking a stab this direction, and then another stab from this direction. And we just want to slice up into that corner, like that. Same thing over here. Take a stab, another one from this direction, and then all we're going to do pop it out. So next step is to put in a stop cut following that curved line for the mouth. I'm just going to start over here, follow it around to the other side. Just like that. Next I'm going to take a slice at it from the opposite direction going now from right to left. And 
then I'll put in our smile lines around these corners. Going to take my knife and curve it around from one direction to the other, and then come back at it. Now, you may find that you have to disengage and then re-engage on these, right? And what I mean by that, it's a pretty sharp corner when you're trying to go around that thing. So what you can do is you can put your blade in, go about halfway around, disengage, re-engage, and finish off your cut. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm going to come back at it from the other direction. Now for my eyebrows, that's really just a simple stop cut too, right? Just doing the same thing. This is a much more gentle sort of a slope and just a little bit of a line. Same thing over here, just a little bit of an eyebrow, just like that. So before we continue putting in any more of our details, let's go ahead and finish sort of shaping the outer edges of this thing. Well, all I'm going to do really, take my rough out knife here, and I'm just going to start removing bandsaw marks, and I'm using sort of a swoop of a slice, I'm just trying to get some shape in here uh, while we're removing bandsaw marks. little texture to the leaf. Now one of the things you could do as well is use a gouge. If you had a fairly uh, flat sweep, maybe a number one or even all the way up to a number three, and you wanted to uh, take some of this surface wood off, removing some bandsaw marks and sort of creating a little bit of a texture or shape. Just going to come up to the bottom edge of the mouth here. And a little bit over here, too. tuck this curve underneath that leaf. So I'm going to take that down a little bit more. Just making a slice here. Slice on the back side. And one for good measure in the middle. We've got a little bit of bandsaw marks here, as well as some pencil marks. We're just going to clean up a little bit. So let's redraw some of our lines. And as I mentioned, with some of these details, you can go ahead and use your knife, or by all means, here's our center line here. Uh, use your V tool. They both work, not a problem. So putting in some of these leaf lines here. Same thing on these little leaves that'll be up here. Right? These kind of curve from the center out like this to the points. And 
we'll do one more over here. And these lines will be for reference as we kind of grab that V-tool and start to work. I'll be using this Drake V-tool. It's probably about an eighth of an inch wide. It's maybe two millimeters. It's a very narrow sort of V-tool. I'm just going to start with that center line below the mouth down towards the very point at the bottom. And next, I'll just start putting in some curved lines that we have here for sort of those leaf lines, okay? Like I said, if you don't have a V-tool, you can do all of this with your knife. It's the same way we did the eyebrows, the nose, you name it, the mouth. It's just a stop cut. Come at it from one direction and then the other, and you're good to go. Okay, a few more here. And right here. For these leaves, I'll start with the center line. Sometimes this grain is going to switch up on you as you get near the top of the end grain there. Just work with it. Put in a line here, here, one over here, and one that goes that way. We'll come over to this side, have some more fun actually it's going to be easier for me to get in here tuck that underneath that berry yeah that grain does not want to go that way so when you're working with wood grain folks and each piece of wood is different if you feel your tool whether it be a knife a gouge the tool, you name it. If you feel that tool start to grab and want to dig down deep into that wood, that's your sign, okay? That means you need to stop, turn that piece of wood around, and head in a different direction. Uh, make that cut from a different angle, and you'll be good. So one of the things that I had drawn in earlier were some little wrinkles around the nose. Kind of adds a little bit of cuteness to it. So why don't we go back in and put those in place here. And of course, if this was uh, not for video, I'd be doing a whole lot more cleanup as we go. One of the things you'll want to do before we get to that nose, um, these little Apologize there. We had a little technical difficulty. I was talking about these smile lines around the outside of the mouth and what you want to do is just soften up the edges on those with your knife. Just hit it from an angle like that. Just soften it up a little bit. You can also do that with this upper lip area of the mouth. Just coming along the top edge of it to give it just a little bevel and soften up the edge. All right. And uh, earlier we talked about doing the same thing with these eyes around the outside edge just to soften those up as well. So additional detail that you can do and what I would recommend is also softening up these edges along your perimeter. Take your knife, angle it for like a bevel cut and give it a little bit of a turn on your blade as you go. Softening up the edge and again adding a little bit of contour. 
come over here and do it on this side too. There we go. Another detail and what you can do if you have a small gouge or a soft V tool. This is a soft V. It's made by OCC Tools. I know that Drake makes uh, a softy as well. And you can see there the bottom of the V tool is not very pointed. It's soft. It's rounded. And so that gives us a different effect. What we'll do with that is come on up here to these leaves and just add some little curved cuts. This again is going to add some texture and add some interest, right? So we'll do the same thing on this side. Just add some more little gouged portions on these leaves to provide some texture. Now you could also go around your outer edges on your carving, do the same thing, you know, start in here and just work towards the outside. And you can see that'll give you a different sort of an effect. For the most part, folks, that's the carving. Let me tell you about the painting and just getting it finished so that it'll look similar to this one right here. Okay? Take off my gloves. So all I did really was start with my wood burner. You don't have to do that, but you could if you wanted to. And I went with my wood burner and sort of outlined these leaves at the top, worked on these lines here, here, and these other detail lines, just making them a little darker. And I got the green paint out and went to town, just painting it green. You can see I went all the way most of the back is also covered. You can see this is Holly Days number five, and we just carved number six. Uh, next thing I did really was to paint the eyes. You know, you put on your layer of white and your black and your white dot. These little lines for the eyelashes, you can do those a number of ways. You could hit that with a wood burner. Uh, you could also do what I did, uh, use a little very fine tip Sharpie and put in those eyelashes. With the berries, it's just red paint with a little white dot to show that they're shiny. And you have yourself a finished carving. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Sonny and I are having a great time, and I want to really make sure and say thank you to everyone who's hitting that like button. What that does, it really helps other carvers discover the channel and these videos and I really appreciate that. That's what we're trying to do is share the love, folks. All righty. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you next time. Ready? What? What are you getting ready to do? Paint? What are you going to paint?